In order to put your first position though, all you need to make sure is that we have some funds available and I have USDT available. So I will be able to trade any token that has this green USDT box next to it, which means they are margined in USDT. So you can see on BitMEX, coins are either margin in USDT or in BTC. Um, BTC obviously means Bitcoin margin, so you need to have Bitcoin deposited in your account. If you want to trade coins that are margin in USDT, you select them. So I'm going to trade Bitcoin and I'll margin it in USDT. Then in order to place your order, you can go to the order controls here on the right side. You have the chance to select the notional in Tether or the notional in Bitcoin. I personally find it easier to just think in Tether. So I would like to change this to Tether, right? Total value, again, notional or total value Tether. I'll select total value and I will put $500 position. Now, what am I gonna do? I have a limit order here. I could also perform a market order here or a stop market for if I were to sell it. There's other order types which you can talk about um, for now. Oops. But for now, I'm gonna place my market order $500. And I'll, if I select market order, it'll basically execute at the best price in the order book at this moment in time. So a price somewhere between the bid and the ask. I can also select a limit, which is generally better practice. And I'll select that limit, maybe just a little bit around the 810. And I'll go buy long. There is also the option to go post only, which means you're guaranteed to have a maker trade. For every trade, there's a maker and a taker. The taker is the one who buys it from the maker. So here, um, if you were to click post only, you will guarantee to be a maker and BitMEX tends to pay maker rebates. Hence, um, you may have a lower or actually a negative execution fee, which means it could be that the, the trade is completely free for you or you even get paid depending on your BMEX staking and depending on your volume on BitMEX. Let's look at the market. We do want to put a trade and we'll first need to see if we go long or short. Right. If I go long, any price increase will benefit me. If I go short, any price decrease will benefit me. I'll trade this one very short term. So let me zoom in a little and we'll just see if it's more likely that the price goes up. I think so personally, because as I mentioned, the Bollinger Band has been crossed. The market sentiment here is rather negative and I expect the market to turn around in the next short moment. So I'll set my order here. You can set your orders through various ways on BitMEX. You can either use these chart order types. You can click on a little plus here. You select your total volume of how much you want to trade. You can also denominate it in Bitcoin or you can denominate it in USDT. I personally think USDT is much easier to remember for yourself. And then we'll select the order here, maybe 665 and we'll go by long and hope for an execution. The order confirmation page comes up. It'll basically tell me what's the order value, what's the margining that I need, what's the market price right now, and how much available balance I have in my wallet. Go buy. And you can now see that an order has been placed here. It's not yet executed. It's waiting for execution. Our position table is still at zero. Our active orders show one order. And we'll basically now need to see and wait when it executes. We could also, if we were in a hurry, take this order and just cross it here. You see, I can take it up. You can move the order essentially on the chart. I think that's a very handy feature and the order amends immediately. If you were to cross it, it'll automatically execute. So I can do that and it'll execute at a market. Warning, amend may execute. Yes, amending this order may cause, yep. Another way to execute your order is basically you write in the total volume you want. Um, you just select market price and it will execute at the best price in the market at this very moment. You can see by market, order value, what's the cost of it, essentially estimated liquidation price, which is a price to kind of keep in a bit of an eye on and then select buy. And we've just bought at the best price. So now you can see you have an open position of this size with this value, liquidation price, the mark price, which is the price of the market right now, the entry price, and whether we have made any PL already, for example. So you can see, oh, looks like we're in the positive. <laughs> this little symbol here, by the way, is a funny one. It shows you whether you have any PL made and it gives you a card to share on social media. 
Here you can close the position at limit or market immediately. And then obviously in the margin table, you also see what is your wallet balance right now? Um, what's your margin balance? What is the available balance in your account? So this is technically withdrawable. Position margin is roughly $2.78, um, which is the money that this position right now needs um, in order to sustain a $500 Bitcoin position. If you find this confusing to see BTC here, you can change your display currency to US dollars and it will show you the value in your US dollars equivalent, right? So you will always see your $500 position. What is it now worth? Well, it's now worth $500 and two cents, right? So slight little bit more. Being a derivative, obviously you have borrowed now money from the exchange and that borrowed money is used to extend your position, right? We have essentially $2 that we have as collateral on the exchange and uh, $500 that we are trading on the exchange. If the price goes up, basically we're making money. If the price goes down, we're losing money. That's uh, because we have bought a long. In order to close your position, you can now select a few things. It's always good to have a stop loss in place. And just like the last time, we can either use the chart trading for this. You can essentially put a stop market here, select our order size, select the stop market price, and then set sell stop. I personally prefer to elect the mark price here because that is not the last price, which is sort of the, the price of the last order, but the price of the index that we are using. It's always a good practice to set a stop limit order. Um, so we should do this. We can do this either in the order controls or on the charts. And I personally like the chart. So let's put a stop loss somewhere here. Select the little cross. Select stop market, the order size, which is $500. And then also what I tend to do is I'll change the trigger to index. Index price is BitMEX's reference price from index exchanges which means a reference price from roughly five to six different exchanges. This one tends to move a little bit slower and therefore I feel I'm better protected with it. So I get sell stop. And that means that anytime the price would move below 62,579 and one cent, the order would automatically be executed at the market price at that moment. Sell, and you can now see there is an order here, which is a stop market trigger, and it will get triggered if the price crosses the $579.1. We should also set, obviously, a take profit price for our order. Let's assume the market comes close to 63000 in the next couple of hours. I'll set that, and I'll take my profits if this happens. So here I'll do a stop market. If the price is above 62,997, I'll make sure this is the index again and I'll set my buy stop. And now I have a position. It may have, it has a stop loss and it has a stop market. So I really have both sides covered. I'll make profit if the price goes up and I close my position at a small loss, but without kind of getting into any trouble um, at a stop market. You can see any fills, but those were obviously only for when we opened the position and you can see the position as it is right now.